Hey everyone, it's Mike here, Global Voodoo, and this is episode number 43 of uh, the Morning Cup of Joe show. You might be asking yourself, man, why is this, uh, this, I thought these were live. Well, they're live on Periscope. If you want to check me out, it's Pick for Profit on Periscope. we got Periscope going right now, so shout out to all of you guys that are watching live on Periscope. Uh, we got a lengthy show here today, guys. Um, I want to come out here and talk about just, you know, reselling, you know, making money. We're going to be talking about the uh, Amazon. We're going to talk about eBay. We're going to be talking about pawn shops, okay? And uh, we've also got uh, three questions from uh, the great people that are on Periscope that uh, that checked me out. They had some great questions. Let's get into those questions now. Um, the first one is from uh, Dondi, and uh, it's just eBay in general. You know, what's what's going on with eBay? What's what's the, what's the deal? All right, and uh, I'm selling an eBay, guys. I've I've never left eBay. Uh, eBay is is kind of a, a, a crazy roller coaster. You know, it's. It's, it's right that way when you list more things, more things sell. I mean, that's evident, right? You got to keep listing, keep listing. What's working for me right now, and I'll just tell you straight up, is that, you know, creating um, uh, like st uh, steals and deals, right? Creating sales, you know, 40% off, 50% off. I'm telling you, if you can create, if you can mark up your items where even if, it, if you mark it down 40% on the markdown manager, you, you still profit, you can do good. There's something in, in eBay's algorithm that triggers views when it comes to 40, 50% off, and I'm taking advantage of that. Now, not just that, you know, I'm, I'm running around, just, you know, listing things. I've got a new system for listing clothing, and it's been working out tremendously. Uh, I can list 40, 50 times more items the way I'm doing it now. I'm not really t t paying attention to detail, to be honest with you. I'm not even using a mannequin. I'm just flying through them because they're clothing, right? Um, we're just blowing them out. And I've got a bunch of stuff here that I'm trying to blow out so I can get this money because I want to really invest my business in the, in the Amazon, right? And um, not slim down eBay, but really just get off this clothing stuff. Uh, I'm not giving up on clothing, but uh, I'm also doing a lot of auctions with clothing, and they're working out. I've got some major views right now on some of these eBay stores with with auctions, with clothing, right? And uh, I'll be telling you guys the results of that when uh, when these are all done because they're, they're, they're getting views. You know, and there's watchers. That's all I'm concerned with. And there's bids, so we'll see what happens with that. But for eBay, again, guys, you know, this Q4 is now, right? It's now. It's happening now. And with that in mind, you know, you've got to understand that, that all these platforms pick up eBay, Etsy, Amazon. You know, uh, your own e-commerce. You know, it's getting colder out in the East Coast, in the Midwest. So people are going to be hunkered down. They're going to be tying to the t or the, the computers, their tablets, and they're going to be shopping for online. Right? You got Halloween coming up. You got Thanksgiving. And then, you know, the big one's Christmas. So, I mean, these are months that people are constantly buying. And then again, January, February, right? So I think right now is the best time for anybody is to just get your stuff listed. If you've got stuff that's laying around, just get it listed. And um, understand if you have high price points to things and you're going, hey, I'm not going to I'm not gonna sell this for any cheaper. That's great. But if the stuff's not moving in your, in your eBay store, start creating sales. I'm telling you guys, it, it changes the algorithm a little bit and um, it starts jiving and the sales start happening and... Um, it's, it's a great thing. Again, remember, wouldn't you rather have today's money than next next six months' money, right? Especially if it's a $40 item. Why not get rid of it today for 22 okay? Nobody's going to slap your hand for making money, okay? You know, oh, I don't, wanna, I don't want people to know that I you know, sold this thing for you know, 15 when it typically sells for 40 who, who gives a shit? Honestly, who cares? Just sell it and move on, right? It's all about buying this product. And it's buying low and selling high so you can get money to pay whatever you got to do. Right, pay your uh, child support. Right, pay for your crack cocaine habit. Whatever, whatever you got to do. Right, so nobody's gonna slap your wrist because if you're not selling things, you're gonna have to get in this desperation mode. Nobody should get in desperation mode, but it happens. I get in there, you know. You look at your numbers and go, "Oh my God, man, I'm I'm behind here." So get yourself motivated. Get yourself listing. Right, you know, October, November should be game time. I mean, putting it all in and just listing, 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 buying, 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 getting this stuff on so you can get this money because this is the greatest time of year to sell, honestly, as an e-commerce uh, e land, right? So eBay, um, yeah, just stick to your guns, keep listing stuff. It does make a huge, huge difference, and the markdown manager, for sure, can hit over the 40%, up to 50%. And uh, if you look at some of the people that are moving volume, okay? Now, I'm not only going to say this for people that are moving volume. If you've got 20 things in your eBay store, you can, you can try and attempt that, um, see if it makes a difference. You're just not, you know, with 20 items in your eBay store, unless they're killer, right? It's it's kind of irrelevant, and I'm not trying to I'm not trying to sound mean or nothing like that, but it kind of is, you know, to the bigger scheme of things. But if you start breaking down on eBay, just the different categories of products that are selling, and um, you start looking at the people that are actually moving some volume, you'll see what they're doing, you know, with those, you know, using some auctions to drive some traffic, and then they're using the sales to get people to buy in, right? 
People tell you, I'm telling you, the mentality with people, when they see something 50% off, they go, oh, that's a deal. Trust me. <laughs> you know? And it might be way, it, your half off price might be the price point is what it sells for. You see what I'm saying? It's kind of a mental thing. So, yeah, eBay, to sum it up, just keep listening, keep doing your thing, try different things, auctions, right? Look for when they, they have the deals, you know? List 100 things for free, 1,000 things for free. Just get stuff listed. Having stuff pile up and you're going out shopping every day is just not the right way to run a business. It becomes a, like Scott says, Scott Hightower, you're an e-hoarder, right? So you got to get the stuff listed. You got to get the stuff on and um, that's all you can really do. <laughs> you know, that's all you can really do is uh, just keep listening and uh, have faith, but have faith in your responsibility, your competition, looking at your competition, looking at the resources around you, looking at the complete listings, understanding it all. And um, there's nothing wrong with... Uh, selling things for a little cheaper just to get some cash flow in, right? Because uh, at the end of the day, if you can't put food in your table for your kids and you're going, hey, I might cut my price down here, then you're going to go broke. Your kids are going to starve. So you got to do what you got to do. This this is the thing. In this world, you have to do what you have to do to survive. It doesn't matter what Global Voodoo says. It doesn't matter what Joe Blow over here says. It doesn't matter what Susie says. It's what you say and what you got to do, right? Think about it. Electrical bills due next week. You don't have the money. What are you going to do? You can go down by the truck stop. <laughs> what are you going to do, right? So, all right. So eBay, uh, definitely a, a player in the game. I'm not, you know, I'm, people always label me as this eBay hater and this is that. I sell on eBay, guys. I ship stuff out every day on eBay, right? Um, I have no complaints with eBay other than, you know, things have changed over there over, over time. And um, the, the market, the algorithm, the Google, I mean, there's a lot of things to take into consideration. And we could talk about that in another video. But... Yeah, so that was for Dondi. Hopefully that helps out with, with some stuff, Dondi. Uh, here's an awesome question. Let me get into these here uh, really quick while these guys, I got these guys on Periscope. That way I can answer them. This is uh, from Jay Olson. Um, Amazon damaged, right? Products came in and uh, they become unfulfillable. What do you do? Well, we got to find out what happened here, okay? The first thing you need to do is, is file you know, a report with Amazon and go in there and have them investigate to see what's wrong with the item, okay? A lot of times... If it's Amazon damaged, they're going to come up and say it's, it's their responsibility, right? And they're just going to give you a dollar amount. And uh, the dollar amount you might get for reimbursement might not be what you're thinking you were selling it for. You can argue that fact, but you're going to have to come up with some, some, some given facts to why, you know, you should get more than what Amazon gave you. And, you know, are there times that you can get that money? Sure, right? But when Amazon damages your products, 99.% of the time, it's, you're getting the alert. Boom, dispersed. You know, here's your money right? If it's coming up as unfulfillable as uh, third party damaged, you know, seller damaged, it's un unfillable and you haven't gotten reimbursed, you have to file a claim over there, right? And get that item sent back to you so you can take a look at what's going on. Um, what I do right off the bat is I'll just have it sent back to me. I'll take a look. And at that point, I'll make a decision to open up a case, contact customer support and explain, hey, what, what's going on here? You know, um, Guys, they're dealing with this all day long, right, Amazon. I mean, between robots running shit over, right, to, uh, you know, this is freight. You got to remember, this is freight. Um, so all these boxes in and out, in and out, in and out, um, you know, and you got UPS drivers just throwing stuff. Stuff's going to get broken. And if you're not packaging your stuff accordingly and you're getting a lot of stuff that's broken, maybe due to your error because you're not you're using the right box or you've left too much gap in the box, you know, that could be an issue too, right? Um, if you got glass and you're not bubble wrapping it, you know, just little things. But when you're getting these unfulfillable orders, just send them, send them back to you and then take a, a hard look at what it was. Try to remember how you sent it. And um, if you say, hey, yeah, this thing was all good, file, file a dispute. File a dispute. A lot of times when you file a dispute back to them and say, hey, that was your fault, you'll get an email within three hours and oh, here's your money. Seriously. So, uh, um, but it's something to look at. Always look at your unfulfillable uh, inventory on Amazon. Look at it monthly. Look at it every two weeks. You'd be surprised what sits in there. And if you never go over there in that, in that sector of Amazon, you might, you might, there might be a thousand dollars sitting over there, right? So understand that that the, um, you know, there's there's stuff that does become unfulfillable. There also becomes the stuff that's expired that sits there, and um, it's your opportunity. It's, it's your you have to be the one to get it removed, sent back to you. It's only fifty cents to get it sent back to you. So not that. Uh, much money out of your pocket but yeah definitely at every turn with amazon with stuff that's unfulfillable or if they said it's damaged get it back <coughs> file a dispute and uh but only file the dispute if you say hey i didn't ship it that way right you know and you're gonna be good to go i think you know I, amazon's gonna do uh 
they're, they're here to protect you. I've never, I have zero complaints about Amazon when it comes to reimbursements, um, to products being damaged, to getting stuff shipped back. The only problem I do have is when they do ship stuff back to me, they'll throw my stuff in a big ass box with a lot of open space and four freaking bubble pockets. <laughs> it's like, come on, man. You know, shit's rattling around the box. But, I mean, I've had problems with Lego sets where I've got it returned because, not a customer return, but returned from Amazon's warehouse because one of the corners of the, of the package it was just peeled off a little bit. I mean, you know, they're their audit system. They go through there, and I guess if it's not to their standards, they send it back. So that doesn't mean you can't sell it, right? I've had stuff that has been unfulfilled, but I brought it back to me and go, uh, this looks good to me, G to G, back to Amazon it goes, right? For the stuff that is not fulfillable on Amazon, I'll throw on eBay, you know? For example, I was selling these action figures, and the bubbles came off of them, right? The plastic bubbles that cover the action figure on the card. I don't know if it was just the heat or whatever, but I sent them out to Amazon, you know, and um, they said there was a problem unfulfillable. I didn't even get an email. You know, I just had to go in there. That's why I say go in there and look at your unfillables. Got it back, and uh, yeah, the cards were off. No big deal. I mean, I just taped it back up, took a picture of it, explained that, and threw them on eBay and sold them. You know, sold them in a lot of six. Here you go. Because the collectors, you know, the collectors, they want that card intact with the bubble. Um, and then there's some people that are buying it for their kids to play with. They're going to open it anyway, so as long as you explain it. But to Amazon, they, they said that's damaged is what it is. It's not like you, you know, it was, it was, it's not like it was unsellable. So, uh, okay. And um, so hopefully that answers your question, Jay Olson. I appreciate you watching me on Periscope. Really appreciate all of you guys watching me on Periscope. It's uh, it's cool to go on there, man. It's like uh, it, it, you hit Periscope and you're live. So uh, I was streaming live from the thrift store this morning, finding stuff sitting in this line, and everybody was talking Spanish, and I know no... The only Spanish words I know are the cuss words. So <laughs> I'm just sitting around, and then people are looking at me because I'm holding my phone up, and I don't know. Found some good stuff. Maybe I could share with you guys here. Uh, I know I shared with some of it on, on Periscope. And then um, I really scored at the end when I went to the counter. And um, they put some more cameras and some cool things. Uh, I got an awesome handy cam. If it works, it's going to be awesome because um, I think I, I did really, really well. And I paid, I want to say I paid $18 for it. And it was going for like 270 this freaking Sony uh, handy cam. Older model. And um, I'm going to do my due diligence and test it make sure it works. So, uh, Okay. Uh, last question here is from. Um, this is a great question from Periscope again. It's from Picker three nine or yeah Picker three nine nine. Do I price my stuff based on the competition for Amazon? And um, it's a great question. You know, how do you price? Do you look up Keepa? Do you look up Camel Camel Camel? Do you uh, do you look at the? Uh, you know what what exactly do you look at when you're pricing your stuff? Um, there's lots of ways to do that. Me personally. Depends on the item. If it is, let's say, groceries, and um, my goal and my intentions when I buy this product is to move it, it's going in right at that lowest price, right? Um, a lot, sometimes I'll send it in like 20% higher, and then usually I'm just, when I, I adjust my prices when the stuff hits the warehouse. When I get the notification, I go into my App Eagle, and I set my parameters, right? But for groceries or fast flips, I'm not here to wait for, you know, John Smith to, to sell out of 30 Oreos, <laughs> you know? I'm here to sell it and get rid of it now. Now, today, today, like De Niro says, if you're going to pay me today. That, you know what I mean? So there's, that's my one strategy. There's the strategies of, let's talk about NES video games or loose cartridge video games. You know, uh, I've been selling those for a long time now. I've kind of got price points for what I know they, they're worth. And some games are just going up every month. <clears throat> Stuff like that. If I see a seller at the lowest price is $9 for, I don't know, let's say WrestleMania. Um, <clears throat> just taking this for example. He's got no description. He's got no picture. I'm not going to go and match him, right? Why? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm coming in with a picture. I'm coming with a description. It's worth more to me. So I'll come in at like 11 or 12, you know, FBA. Um, so there's those standpoints there where I just look at the laziness of the other sellers and say, you know what? I've been selling enough on, on Amazon to realize that a picture and a good description goes a long way. So I'll wait for that seller to move or sell at 9 and I'll sell for 11, right? Then you've got stuff that is, I like to call investments, you know, um, where I'm buying a product now with waiting for the market to change, waiting for the market to go up on this, waiting for the the people that are trying to make the 10, 20% ROI to, to disappear. I'm waiting for the competition to, to move apart, right? And this happens, you know, the best way you can, if you want to know what I'm talking about, here's, the, here's what I'm going to talk about. Go to your, if you've been selling Amazon for a while, go pull up last year's info and pull up your sales and look at what you sold, Okay. And, and especially the retail arbitrage stuff. 
Um, and see now where that listing's at. See? Oh, wait a minute. There's one person selling this toy. I sold that toy for 30 and This dude's selling for 90 now. Trust me. There's a lot of listings like that. And um, there's products that, are, that come out that are out now that you can get and hold on to. And when they're not available anymore, well, you're sitting on them, right? Um, there's also investments in terms of buying stuff like the dead stock. Uh, vintage action figures, I mean, in-box NES systems, stuff that, you, you know, it's not produced anymore that you can demand a higher price for. And it's all about the buy low, sell high, but at the same point in time, you know, it's about, you're, it's an investment. You're trying to maximize your investment, right? It's a stock market. You're looking at it. Okay, I paid 20. It's at 60 right now. Um, can we get to 90? Ooh, got to 90. Okay, ooh, shit. What do I, what is going to happen a month from now? Ah, I'll just sell for now for 90, right, and take my money. So I've got a lot of products that are like that. It's the longer tail kind of, um, I just you know, they're investments. So that, that's what I like to, to look at with a lot of different things. They're interesting. Um, I used to do it all the time with, with baseball cards. You know, you buy it. Let's, let's see what this rookie's going to do. I got his rookie card, serial number to 10 with an autograph and a jersey, right? Um, right now it's selling for 100 but, you know, if this guy's the real deal, it'll be at 250 you know? Um, you're you're kind of gambling to some extent, but... That's not for everybody. You got to have a little bit of money to play with because there's not an immediate return on that type of uh, of selling. Um, so you got your fast flips, right? You've got the, um, uh, you know, you're you're into it right now. You want to move it in the next pay period. But I think overall, I think if you're looking at just pricing stuff in general, you know, looking at Keepa and Camel, 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 it gives you an indication. It's kind of like a small snapshot in time, but it's not accurate. I'm telling you that right now. It's not accurate. Somebody can tell me why it's not. Um, it doesn't include the highest all the time. I've, see, I've sold things over and over and over, and it's tagged at the highest, and it's not even close to what I sold it for. And I've even gone back and looked back six months ago. Why doesn't it show that I sold that book for 500 Which is great for me, <laughs> right? Um, but if you're just sitting there believing that, you know, Camel, 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 and Keepa are just, the information is 100% accurate, you're missing out because, again, you, you, those prices go up when the competition's gone, right? When there's only a couple sellers, right? Or there's one seller, and... Um, you're the only FBA seller, and there's people merchant filled for 13, and you're selling for 60 all day long. You know, I mean that there's th- that happens all day long on Amazon. So, I think it's just what is your business model? You know what I mean? Um, what's your business model? Picker 399. What what do you want to accomplish out of this? You want to start with fast flips? Hey, fast flips, long tail investment strategies, they all work, right? It's all about making that dollar, that ducat, making that bank, <laughs> right? And when you start doing that, you just find out what works for you. Find out your price structure. Uh, the biggest thing I can tell you, though, when it comes to that, around this time of year, raise your prices. When you're sending into Amazon, okay, if you're like me, I'm in Arizona, and I'm shipping it to freaking Virginia, and it's taking 11 days to get checked in, I am not keeping it at the lowest price there. There's no way, right? Um, I might be shooting myself in the foot because once it gets active and it's checked in, you know, and I'm at $9.99, and everybody else now is selling for $24.99, what happens to my listing? It goes pending. Always, always list it higher. When it gets checked and you come in and you reevaluate, that's my strategy. I love that strategy because I've been down that road where, you know, prices skyrocketed. I've also been down that road where prices have tanked, right? And, um, you know, so I just do a happy medium price when I'm listing them. It gets to Amazon. It gets checked in. I re, you know, look into the listings, look at the competition, see what's going on. A lot can happen in 24 hours. A lot happens in an hour, okay? But this is that time of year where prices are going up on certain things and competition's coming in. And um, you need to, to find out your best way to price things and to price them to move or price them to strategically align yourself with uh, a possible sell-off. You know, maybe Amazon's jumping out of stock. I mean, I buy stuff that Amazon's in stock on hoping, and not hoping, just when, when, they, when they go out of stock, I'm, I'm sitting pretty. And there's a lot of sellers that think that way too. So keep in mind, you know, it's all up to you, but I think the best takeaway from this is just price your stuff higher when it gets to the warehouse. When it comes back, it's checked in, it's in your uh, Amazon store, then you go in there and you do the strategy. So uh, hopefully that answers your question there. Picker 399, awesome questions from the people on Periscope. Uh, I'm going to say goodbye to the people on Periscope here today. I'll be t- uh, checking in sometime later on Periscope. So again, if you're not following me on Periscope, it's Pick for Profit. I will talk to you guys soon. All right, so uh, we are now um, off Periscope. Again, I love Periscope, it's super cool. Uh, appreciate the uh, 400 plus people watching, man. That's pretty insane. I've, um, just mind blowing that you can hit a button and boom, <laughs> you know, you're on, uh, you're on the go. Okay. All right. So again, we've got these topics I want to talk about today. Um, Amazon is is definitely one of them. 
the uh, Amazon, you know, it's Q4, guys. It's now. It's happening. Things are just, you know, they're jiving. They're moving. Um, things are going to be sold. You know, things are going to be tanked. Uh, just having a strategy, I think, is, is, is a great thing to, uh, to, to, to have, right? Have an understanding. Set up a goal sheet. Set up, you know, a piece of paper that says, hey, this is my expectations or this is what I want to accomplish. I want to get 300 things out, you know, in the next week to Amazon. Setting up these little goals are, are good because they, they're, they, you feel great when you accomplish them. You know what I mean? You feel, you know, oh, yes, I did it. I made it happen. And um, I think that's the only way to grow your business is to set some expectations, set some goals and see if you can accomplish them. Set the dollar amount, too. Don't be afraid. Hey, you want to do a million? Set it there. Right. Try to get there. Yeah. Oh, okay. You only did two thousand this month. Hey, let's try next month. All right. Don't give up. Um, but now is the time, guys, for Amazon. Where it, 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 Tanya, if you've been selling on here, or if this is your new first year, things just start moving so fast that you just wish you had more money. You wish you had more things over there. It's just amazing. Um, I'm going to give you some some three things that I think right now are are good opportunities. Uh, you know, because we're, we're still in October, guys. I mean, we haven't even hit Halloween. <clears throat> we had to, you know we got Thanksgiving and we've got Christmas right uh, three things here that I think are, are pretty good uh, pretty good bets um, and again it's just you do you got to do your deal, 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 uh, due diligence <laughs> and um, and see if they work for you and understand the market candies okay uh, it's candy season so you can find candies and um, people love candies they love candies and chocolates so look at start looking at those uh, remember after Halloween you know these stores are just gonna blow these out. Just because Halloween is over doesn't mean people aren't going to buy that chocolate marshmallow chewy, chewy majigger, right? They buy it. They'll buy it in January, February. They get hooked. It's like crack. Some people don't smoke crack. People just eat 10 pounds of candy all day, right? I'm not here to tell them who, they, uh, who if they're right or wrong, but at the end of the day, keep buying it. Look at the multi-pack options with candies, right? Look at candies and, and chocolates and stuff like that that are not actively on Amazon, and create those listings. Stop being afraid to create listings. If you have never created a listing, just do it. Do that for me right now. Do that for me today. Do it this week. Create a listing. It's very easy. Um, it's not complicated. And uh, a lot of times you don't have to fill out every field that they give you. Okay. Um, with candies and, and grocery, there's a lot more in-depth information you have to provide, like calories and how many fat grams, stuff like that. that. Yeah, you need to put that in there. But if you're doing something like toys or some other stuff it's just it's boom it's, it's sometimes it's like quicker than ebay right um so you know look at the candies look at those opportunities um is, is a good bet the clothing category right now uh, i think is, is an excellent opportunity there's um again you have to have some money to spend some money right you just can't go to the thrift store and think you're going to find new tag stuff for a dollar okay and um i'm not talking about that when i'm talking about clothing i'm talking about sourcing i'm talking about finding uh, opportunities whether it's online or in, in retail stores. They're there all day long. Guys, there's retail stores, chains, that are hurting right now. And um, they're blowing things out. Name brands. You know, they got to they make ends meet too. They're no different than us, right? When we got to blow stuff out on, uh, on eBay, okay? So understand that. That's huge. And um, you can pick up on a lot of awesome, amazing deals on some uh, heavily discounted items that you can sell for clothing. Um, in terms of clothing, if you're not... Um, gated if you're still gated for clothing you guys need to check out my, my buddy brandon right uh demystify 101 uh you just go to google you can go on this channel here and check it out or if you're in resellers roundtable he he posted an amazing deal um last week or a couple days ago um to get on gated i'm not gonna mention the price i don't know if it's still available but i mean just a mind-blowing deal um the guy's a professional the guy's been doing it i don't know how many people he's on gated but um he, it's not like he's sending the same file over and over he's he's willing to work with you he's got a whole facebook group with a lot of information in there, so go check it out. Uh, you know, it's, it's, I think it's imperative if you're an Amazon seller to get ungated in some of these categories. You know, um, again, he doesn't do grocery or health and beauty. Uh, I'm sure he can put you know in touch with somebody who does or give you some advice to to help you. But I'm just talking about clothing here and uh, shoes. So you got that there. Clothing is is an awesome opportunity right now. I've been selling clothing here. You know, past couple of days like hotcakes, and um, we're running out this afternoon grabbing more and just keep singing in. You know, if you, as you start to sell clothing, you'll start to realize there's not that much competition, and there's so many more opportunities. It's all about the the name brand. It's all about the searchability, right? It's all about the content. You know, um, going to Walmart and picking up Morona shirts, nobody really cares, right? Um, or Croft and Borrow, or whatever those brands are. Nope, those are not brands that you're going to be able to sell. 
You could try to sell them. I just don't think it's worth the time. <laughs> you know, you have to go after the Ralph Lorenz, you're going to have Nikes, uh, Adidas, stuff like that um, to get you thinking outside the box there. And uh, the other one thing I want to talk about, guys, is, is an awesome opportunity for Amazon. Um, I'm not, I'm, again, I'm just talking about right now. I'm not talking about Q4, like, you know, heavy, deep into December with toys and stuff like that. I'm just giving you some some things I think you can use to, uh, to ignite, you know, some different areas of Amazon. Um, the other one is uh, remotes, creating your own listing, finding remotes, guys. I mean, they're everywhere, right? The way and pay is the Goodwills, the Salvation Armies. They're just sitting there. And, um, you know, more and more people are buying. I mean, I'm buying remotes, believe it or not, off Amazon and eBay to sell with my the units, my stereo units I get. So if I'm buying them, then, you know, what about the other resellers? <laughs> okay. Um, there's a ton of opportunity in there of listings on there on Amazon that don't have the, the remotes, okay? There's thousands, tens of thousands, okay? And um, believe it or not, you know, these remotes can go for $10, $20. Now, I know on eBay, you know, you'll have, you know, Sony CX1054, and there'll be 25 people selling it. And one, the lowest is $2 shipped. Nonsense. There's none of that over on uh, Amazon just yet. I'm sure it'll be coming, but look at remotes, you know? Um, I'm telling you, I, I shop all day prime over merchants, so... Uh, What's what? What does it take to, to create a listing for you know remotes? A, f a photograph, a quick listing, <laughs> you know, uh, package it up, maybe have it pre-boxed. It doesn't take much. I mean, you can even poly bag it, throw it in a poly bag, and bubble wrap it if you if you don't want to use a box. But you know, just making sure these things work, clean them up, and uh, it could be a nice little side business for you. Um, you know, so you sell, it's been crazy what you sell some remotes for, believe it or not, you know, especially when you're the only person on the Amazon uh, marketplace and you're selling them for 45 and everybody uh, on eBay is selling for 7 Think about it. So there's my, my tips for you guys on that, uh, the Amazon stuff. Uh, again, you know, if you're not doing Amazon, what is what is really holding you back at this point in time? You know, I see all the time, oh, I'm afraid of FBA. What, what, is, what is holding you back? Okay. You know, this channel here is dedicated to talk about reselling, eBay, Amazon, e-commerce in general, local hustles. But what is really holding you back? What are you afraid of? I understand from the eBay mentality to Amazon, it's like night and day. But at the end of the day, once you go through the Amazon jump, FBA, you, you're going to sit there and you're going to tell yourself, I should have done this years ago. So if you're listening to me for the first time, or if you're on this channel for a long time, and all you're doing is eBay and you're, you're afraid, just, just what is holding you back? Okay, I'm telling you, I mean, 100 times the one, 10 times the one, the money from eBay to Amazon, guys. I mean, it's it's something every reseller sh should have in their back pocket and do. And um, that's why I come on this channel and talk about, you know, do's and don'ts. And if you screw up, you screw up, you're banned. Hey, you know, but what's holding you back in terms of, you know, finding that success? Are, are sales slow for you on eBay right now? I mean, is it, is it deadly slow where like you're almost biting a bullet? Then get start getting stuff to Amazon. Start sourcing different, start thinking different, and get away from maybe a crowded area, okay, where, you know, sales aren't there, you know. I sell stuff all the time on Amazon, guys, every damn day. And um, like I said, I'll sell 100 things on Amazon compared to selling one or two on eBay. And you could say, well, Mike, that's because you're not selling the right things. That, it could be, but I'll tell you what. If I had 100 of those fast-flipping things on eBay, they still wouldn't sell like, like they would in Amazon. You know, with those low ranks, boom, boom, I'll just roll on them. You know, so, yeah, so what's holding you back? It's now's the time, you know, get your feet wet, jump in there, create your first shipment, get it out the door, and it gets checked in, and if you get the right stuff, start start selling, you're going, this is great, I don't have to package anything up, I love this. Just go out there and do that for me, go out there and, and, and see what I'm seeing, and uh, you'll enjoy great success with it. And like anything, you have to work hard, smart, and uh, you have to keep doing it. This isn't a do it once and it's just a passive income thing. I just had to source once, and now we're making three point two million. <laughs> no, right? It's a constantly a buying and, and selling. Yeah, you know, that's what reselling is. So if you can't handle that, of the constant buying and selling, this is not for you. You know, you, honestly, you have to keep buying and selling. You know, if you think the answer is to go to private label, uh, go into Alibaba and order a container full of shit, it's a risk, right? And um, depending on what you get, you can go broke or you can go big. Um. But again, you know, you're always buying and reselling. You're always buying and selling, buying, selling, buying, selling, right? It's like a car dealership. Look at that analogy. If you have 500 cars in your lot, you're selling, man, this is great, this is great. But if you're not buying other cars to reflip, and next thing you know, you're at your lot and you got three 78 Pintos that nobody wants, how do you expect to make money? 
It's like an eBay store. E eBay sales are slow. Well, how many items are on your, on your eBay? Well, here, here's a link. Uh, 30. What do you expect, dude? Right? I used this analogy the other day when I was talking to somebody. You know, the uh, imagine you know yourself as a convenience store where you're walking in the convenience store and um, you you like the convenience store that's got everything. There's there's burrito, bean burritos over here. There's freezies over here. There's tobacco. There's beer, chips. <clears throat> if you don't have all these things to fill up your convenience store, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think people will walk into your convenience store and all you have is one can of beans just sitting there, you know, or or no pretzel? How do you expect to make money with two freaking things in an empty freaking convenience store? You see my mentality with that? So um, that's the way I look at things. You know, abundance is, is great, right? And variety is, is, is even better. Having variety and, and going wide on everything rather than deep on everything, you know? That's where always worked for me. That's why I've been in business for 10 plus years, right? Full time, right? I don't need anybody's, nobody's helping me, <laughs> right? I don't have a job, people. This is my job. This is my business. And um, that's what's worked for me. So, um you got to sacrifice time, guys, with, with this, right? Um, you got to know what your time's worth, and you got to sacrifice the opportunities that are out there uh, and your time, too, right? I mean, if you go, hey, I would get up at 10 and I go to bed at 5. Well, you know, stop being freaking lazy and just get out there and freaking start doing things, right? Turn off the TV. I know this is a big problem for a lot of you people because, trust me, a lot of you people have seen some stuff, heard some stuff. You know, having 50 things in your eBay store and you've been on eBay for two years, I mean, it's, come on, man. Right? How can you just run around and tell people, oh, well, yeah, eBay's slow. You know what I'm saying? You gotta hustle. This is hustled in and every day. Now you can say, Mike, I don't need to hustle anymore. That's great. You know, everybody's gonna get to a point where they don't. You know, I could sit back here and, and, and just, you know, make money off my t shirt business. Great. <laughs> you know? But I, I'm, I'm, I wanna better myself. I wanna be in a better situation. I wanna, you know, always advance. You know, I want, I want my kids to have bigger and better. Right? Um, you know? Plus, I want a freaking Ferrari, <laughs> right? Come on, you know that, that. But that's what it is. You know, it's just sacrifice now to get to the reward later. The reward is always there for the people that sacrifice. I'm telling you, you put the time in now. There's always a reward. Okay, remember that. You don't put the time in. There's never a reward. You know, don't be self entitled and think, well, I don't have to do shit. I'll just get the money in three months. This stuff will all sell. Yeah, you'll be broke and you'll be homeless. <laughs> homeless. All right. Um, Get some coffee here. Appreciate you guys tuning in and checking this out on uh, the Morning Cup of Joe, episode number 43. Um, again, if you have questions you'd like me to answer on these, I'll be pumping these out every week uh, A Morning Cup of Joe show. Feel free to hit me up on Twitter. It's Pick for Profit, uh, you know, or leave a comment down below in this video, and I'll answer that uh, the following show. All right, so let's talk about um, pawn shops. There's a lot of talk about pawn shops, and people are, you know, Think we've got it all figured out, pawn shops, and it's just not the reality of pawn shops. I want to talk about pawn shops this way. What do you think about pawn shops? Have you ever been to a pawn shop? What's your experience with pawn shops? Okay, are they ethical? Right? Um, are some aren't? Some are. Some are you know reputable. Some aren't. All right. The uh, so pawn shops help people. Believe it or not, you know when people are in times of need, you know you can hock your shit to them. Right? You can pawn it, or you just sell it to them. All right, um, so there's that aspect of, you know, they're there to give, but you know what? Sometimes, you know, you walk in with silver or gold and they're going to give you 30%. Is that called, you know, screwing somebody? Possibly, but if they're the only person in town that's doing it, who are they really screwing, right? Um, pawn shops, we can make a lot of money. There's a lot of responsibility, a lot of overhead. They got to deal with stuff that's stolen all the time, right? Um, I just don't think... For me, for all these years, you know, I've, I've gone to pawn shops. I'm always looking for deals. I'm always looking to add something else in my route, whether it's a th from thrift stores to garage sales. So I've been around the block and been to pawn shops. I just didn't start two months ago. And um, I've just been, you know, I find opportunities here and there. Very little. Not enough to count it as a business. Uh, not even worth uh, somebody's time to, to tell you what items to go buy at a pawn shop, right? Um, it's just, the, it, it's not viable. And I think, you know... If you if you go out there and and, and look and source and, and this is that you're gonna you'll realize that that you just can't count on that every time, right? Um, you can you, think about it. It's worth your time to go to garage sales and thrift stores. You might find the opportunities there. Pawn shops can be difficult. Do they miss things? Yeah, sure, sure from time to time. But most of these pawn shops, they're they're wise of the shit, man. Come on, that's what they do all day long. They're sitting there looking the stuff up on the computer. They already sell on eBay. Some of them sell don't sell on Amazon. Okay, so to have a psychology of you know. 
buying from pawn shops, like I said, man, it's hit or miss. I'm more focused with pawn shops when I'm talking about pawn shop profits is about the fact that selling to them, okay? Selling to them. You know, what that does is it, it gets that immediate fast cash, all right? Yeah, now keep in mind, you're not going to get top dollar for your item. You're there just to move it. It's about buying low and selling it, you know, at a medium pace, selling it for today's money, okay? And if you can find out what pawn shops want and what they need, and you're able to source this stuff, you can make a, you can make three, four, five hundred dollars a day, guys, cash, okay? I mean, does that not excite you yet? <laughs> I mean, for real. You know, the local hustle is, should never be turned off. If, you don't, if you're like, hey, I don't need a local hustle, that's great. I do it all damn day long. Who doesn't want money today? Right, but let's get let's let's get the reality here. Why you should be selling to them? Okay, first the fast cash. Right, maybe sales are slow online. Right, um, again, you know, uh, no shipping of the item. There's no returns. There's no uh, uh, defect rates. There's no negative feedbacks. These are just clean transactions, guys. Where you come in, you work out a deal. And believe it or not, when you build rapports and relationships with these people at the pawn shop, they will they'll hook you up a lot, right? They give you a little bit more money. They see you bringing them stuff. And, you, you know, you, as long as you have the understanding that they're to, there to make money too, right? If they're saying, hey, man, I can only sell that for 100 and you know that for a fact, and they're going to give you 80 and you want to bitch over, you know, $10, come on, just sell it. Move on, right? Having this ability to sell locally on Facebook and Craigslist and offer up is, is awesome, right? Every market, I don't care. You can put me in Alaska. I will figure out what sells in those markets, and I'll also figure out what the pawn shops want because, you know, I have product that is designed only for online. I could think about it. How am I going to sell, <laughs> you know, uh, can, I, can I walk into the pawn shop? Or is the pawn shop going to buy my Hugo Boss Blazers for me that I could sell online for 50 to 100 bucks? No, they don't, they're not concerned with that at all. Right, so you're gonna have to find out what they want, and it's it's as simple as a phone call. It's as simple as walking in their store, right? So, this local game is important, guys, because I'm trying to get you to become the 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 ultimate, you know, uh, reseller. I'm trying to build you something that, if something falls down here or sales decline here, you still got something going. Because if you, if everything starts trembling down, right, and e-commerce is slowing down or whatever like that, you have something else to to work with, okay? Um, it's very important, and um, it's especially more important when you are in a position where sales are slow for one month, and you have to pay your bills, or you're getting evicted, or you can't feed your kids, or they're turning your lights off. What would you do if you have the local game and you've got products that you can flip, right? I'm not saying. Here's what I'm saying. Let's say you find a, um, let's take for example this handy cam I found today, right? It sells for 200 plus on Amazon. I could send it in there, right? I could take it to the pawn shop. How much do you want to give to me for it? I'll give you 75, let's say. Let's just say that's what they say. Okay. That doesn't mean I have to accept it. That just tells me, okay, guess what he's willing to give me? Let me go home. Maybe I'll merch fulfill it right now. List it on there. Maybe I'll throw an eBay for 150 Maybe I want it gone in a week. So if none of those sales channels with Amazon or eBay work out, then I just run over the, the pawn shop, guys. Hey, I'll take that. Thank you very much. And we move on. I don't worry about, oh, what could have happened, or I could have put more money in my pocket. I'm not waiting two weeks. On some of this stuff. I'm here to, let's, let's move it. You know, move it, move it. You've got to move it, move it. <laughs> so keep that in mind. All right, the, uh, it's just very important to have this cash flow, okay? Because as much as this information sounds great and you can make millions of dollars reselling on eBay and Amazon and everybody and their mother can do it, man, I'm telling you, there is a struggle out there, okay? There's always going to be a struggle. I mean, I don't care who you are. You'll always struggle in life, and reselling it. There's a it's a roller coaster. It's up and down, right? Sometimes you're just you're freaking you're just freaking flying high, right? And then sometimes you're just down and low. And um, when you're down and low, it's it's never fun, right? And um, that's why I bring up you know pawn shop profits and stuff like this. How you can make money from doing this because it's a viable option. It's 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 something that people have been using since pawn shops existed. <laughs> you know, making money. Um, Trying to buy, trying to outsmart the pawn shop on a buy, I wouldn't. I don't know if that's brilliant. Um, it's, it's one, it's risky, and two, you know, your 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 profit margins when you go to return and flip that thing aren't the greatest unless they've completely overlooked it. Hey, take my word for it. Look at the two options that are you know we're given: buying two pawn shops, 
buy, or buying from pawn shops and selling to pawn shops. Go see if, which system works best for you in your area. Go, go take a look at it and, and then report back to me. Let me know. I'm, I'm interested here. You might be in a, an area where uh, these pawn shops, they just don't even have the internet. <laughs> they don't know. How much for the N64? <coughs> you know, N64, uh, how about $4? Okay. Yeah, then that's winning, right? How much for that, uh, that Gibson guitar? Oh, how about here's today's special, $4. Yeah. I mean, come on. No-brainer shit like that, but... I don't I mean... Pawn shops I'm going to are not like that. <laughs> and I've been to a bunch. Sometimes, majority of the time, with some pawn shops, their prices are so high, they're higher than the retail prices, right? Because they it, it's used as bait, you know? Oh, you know, you want, hey, we want to trade something out, right? So you look at that and say, oh, you know... Yeah, I'd like to get that flat screen, man, but, uh, you know, I only have 100 hours trade bait... Well, what do you think about that one? Well, you're asking 180. Well, how about you know, buck up another 20 bucks, 120, and you can have it, right? See how they work? It's a, it's a trade bait. And um, anytime they're selling that stuff that's higher price, they're winning. Okay. So so definitely look at that. Let me give you um, five examples right now of stuff you can sell to pawn shops. Okay. Uh, one's electronics, guys. I mean, camcorders, tablets, iPhones. Man, these stores will eat them up, right? Because they can move them, right? I know, for example, one pawn shop by me over here, I don't care what tablet it is, on the low end, 100 bucks. they sell it for. That's what they sell it for. So if I can get them for $10, I can get 40 50 bucks out of them. They sell them for 100 They double their money. Right? Uh, you know, if I'm finding iPads, yeah, I'm going to get more money for them. But, you know, uh, electronics is great to sell. Um, guitars, musical equipment, they love that stuff. People are just walking in looking for amps. And um, guitars, it's just... Um, you know, it's all about buying low. It's buying at the lowest price possible when you're finding it at a garage sale or an estate sale or online or whatever it is. But then understand what that pawn shop's willing to give you for that, okay? And remember, negotiation is key. It's because they say 40, you know, doesn't mean that's the bottom end price. They like to negotiate. Hey, how about 50? Okay. Well, split the difference. Okay, whatever, you know. Just make a deal. Don't just sit there and go, yeah, he says 40. I guess I'll have to take it. You might say, if you say, hey, uh, how, about, how about 50 bucks? We'll, we'll call it a deal. Okay, done. You know, these guys are master freaking negotiators, these pawn shops. You know, majority of them are. Um, and they're talented people, and um, they've been doing it for a long time. There's very successful ones that are out there. Don't get me wrong, that they know what the hell they're doing. I'm not, I never claimed to be the pawn shop king. <laughs> I've never had a pawn shop. I uh, had a storefront in... Uh, Illinois, and it was more like a, uh, a buy, sell, trade, more, more than like that, just, you know, sell me your shit, <laughs> right? That was what my store was, and we didn't pawn anything, we didn't, uh, I didn't mess around with that aspect of it. So, we've got um, electronics, guitars, video games. Um, people are always coming into them looking for video game systems. Again, remember, you're not going to get top dollar. You know, they're not going to give you $80 for your NES system, okay? Just they're not going to understand that but if you go to the garage sale at eight o'clock this morning you pick up one for five bucks and you know hey these guys are gonna give me 40 bucks for this what, what's the problem here fast cash right go get yourself a tombstone and a freaking six pack of Miller light before lunch <laughs> and you still got 25 dollars in your profit in your pocket right so you video games uh obvious here is silver and gold um just remember that you know there are that's how they're making their money okay and um and they're making out the pawn too Try to find the store that's going to give you the most market value price for your pawn, uh, your silver and your gold. Okay, find a refinery. Somebody's going to give you close to to spot of today's spot price, because some of these people will just take advantage of you. A lot of these uh, big chain ones will. How much is the silver? Uh, silver's at what? Sixteen dollars today. Um, we'll give you six dollars for each ounce. That's ridiculous, because somebody down the road might pay ninety percent spot on silver. You got to do your homework, right? Just don't. Listen to one guy when you know you got other opportunities out there. Um, and my, my last one here is uh, vacuums. I'm talking about um, higher end vacuums, even even low basic forty dollar Walmart vacuums. Um, some pawn shops will take because they sell them. Okay, people are coming in; they're looking for a deal too. And um, you know, I sell a lot of different types of vacuums to uh, to pawn shops, and uh, that's out here for me. Um, I shouldn't even be saying this because if anybody's out in this area, now they're going to be selling uh, vacuums. But uh, they do buy them. They sell them fast. So uh, I'm always on the lookout for, for vacuums. A lot of times the people will sell them. or A lot of times you find them on the side of the road. And uh, people are just lazy. They don't know how to fix them. They don't know how to uh, rip them apart and clean them. 
because uh, little, little baby Susie threw rubber bands on the floor and mommy vacuumed them all up. Now the vacuum cleaner doesn't work. It's broken, honey. It doesn't work. Well, what, what happened? I don't know. It's just a piece of shit. We need a Dyson. And then you take it apart and you're like, dude, there's all these rubber bands, right? And there's a G.I. Joe guy. <laughs> right? So, um, yeah. So hopefully that gets you to, to realize the potential with, with pawn shops. Um, I'm going to be talking further about this here. Uh, a, lot, a lot of it in private as well. The, there's this opportunity for you to get some fast cash. And I, and I think that's, um, that's something everybody needs, isn't it? Fast cash. You want, who doesn't want to learn about fast cash? Um, and it's not for everybody. You know, not everybody's going to want to walk into a pawn shop. Um, some people are antisocial. They don't even want to deal with anybody outside their home. Okay, so they're just stuck in their world, and that's fine. I understand that. <laughs> you know, but when it comes to making money, I am game any which way. If I got to go sit on the street corner and sell pineapples and coconuts, hey, and there's a profit there, and I'm going to make some money, I'm going to do it. I get no shame in my game, people. No shame, right? I'll do whatever it takes for me to put money in my pocket, besides robbing, killing, stealing, and selling drugs. <laughs> but uh, you know what I mean? You know, so. You know, if I go out and buy a, a, a freaking uh, DVD store out, right? I don't even know if DVD stores exist, but maybe I find somebody has got a storage unit full of 20,000 DVDs, and um, they're going to sell to me for t five cents a DVD. I'm in. I'm going to go sit in the street corner, or I'll figure out something to start a DVD business. Trust me, right? It's always thinking. That's, 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 that's what's called an entrepreneur, starting other things. It's typically how you know, an entrepreneur does. They start something. You know, if you're not an entrepreneur, if you're selling on eBay and Amazon, if, if you think about it, you're not starting anything new. <laughs> you're there with everybody else. Being that entrepreneur, doing that local hustle, building stuff, guys, doing local stuff. I'm talking about it. maybe, maybe, hey, you know, in the summertime, you're going to offer a uh, lawn care business, right? And, um, you know, it's, at first, you know, you need the equipment, you need this, this that, a trailer. And then maybe the intentions is, hey, I'm going to get this thing rolling. I'll get some customers and then I'll just hire it out to somebody, right? All I got to do is make sure he's paying me. You know, that, that's kind of, the, you know, the entrepreneur spirit of, of building on something. So um, I just hope you guys take this seriously. You know, I, I don't want to come out here and just keep, you know, wasting breath. I want to give me some feedback, guys, and let me know if, if the information I talk about is helping, if it's not helping, um, or if you go tell me to kick a can. It doesn't matter. I just want you to take seriously. As I know, you know, um, the channel has gotten pretty good size here. Um, I appreciate everybody that watches and subscribes, but... I want, to make, I want to make sure you're taking this seriously because I do. It's all I think about. It's, it's, it's my life, you know? I'm not here to, to fake it and lie to you and tell you I'm, I'm, the, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about things that I don't do. Everything I talk about is what I've done, right? And that's the most important thing. There's an experience here for me telling you and sharing these stories and giving you tips and tricks and, and laughs and, uh, you know, and whatever it may be. So I just want to make sure you're taking it seriously and you're using this information to, to better your life to put money in your pocket, you know, to raise your family or to, you know, retire, um, you know, to pay your electric bill, your mortgage bill, you know, maybe, maybe it's just beer money. <laughs> maybe it's just beer money, you know, as long as it's working, I'm, I'm happy. So, uh, you know, if you can balance family, um, it's the greatest thing, you know, um, a lot of us out here that have family, you know, it, it's hard, you know, you got kids growing up and there's responsibility, there's huge responsibility. And, um, you know, I'm not just some young kid that's living in, uh, you know, in home and uh, just have no free will, you know, uh, no responsibility. You know, I have responsibility and, you know, um, sometimes the, resp the responsibility is so great that, uh, you know, sometimes things happen, you know, uh, unexpected costs, uh, somebody gets sick and uh, you're tapping into it. So, you know, enjoy, you know, enjoying your family, spending time with them, understanding your business, dedicating yourself to, to wick, winning and rocking out your business, you know, saving money. You never know, man. I mean, there's always rainy days ahead, people. If you think there's never a rainy day ahead, you're smoking the pipe. <laughs> you're smoking the pipe. So start saving this money, guys, okay? Save it, save it, save it. Just do that for me. Um, just plan your path. Plan your path to success. Pl imagine yourself in a bigger place or, uh, you know, a, a better place. You know, that's what I'm always looking at. I'm always looking at going, I want to, I want to, I want to advance. I just don't want to be stuck and be stale. I'm always looking to, you know, improve. And um, I just think that's naturally part of life, you know, is always looking to advance. And I think that's why I've sold all different types of things and had so many experience with things because, you know, I am kind of the entrepreneur, free-minded, small business that runs around and is always thinking of the next uh, uh, you know, way for me to make some money. Because I want to test these things, you know. I want to see if they work. So uh, appreciate you guys hanging out with me here today. Um, 
hope you guys, uh, if you did like this type of video and these Morning Cup of Joe shows, uh, do me a favor and just hit the like button. Maybe share it with a friend. Uh, also, you know, leave me a comment below. I'd like to, to, to see the comments some feedback. I'm always appreciative when people take time out of their day to uh, leave me feedback, um, whether it's good or bad. Um, if you're leaving some bad comments, I might just, uh, if I don't like it, I'll delete it. <laughs> I might ban you at the same time. But, uh, you know, I'm not here to argue. I'm not here to, to do any of that. I'm just here to do my thing give out some information and move along and, until next journey, next uh, video or whatever, right? So, uh, you know, um, but if you did find this useful, I'd really appreciate some feedback on it and that'll tell me, okay, I need to keep doing these more or maybe nobody wants to hear it anymore and I'll stop. So uh, if you could take that quick uh, minute out of your day and uh, use your Siri and just uh, hit uh, comment and uh, speak in a Siri and hit done and uh, let me know. So appreciate you guys watching. Appreciate you guys on Periscope that were watching earlier. Um, you guys go out there and just rock it and crush it. Be yourself, be true, be you. And uh, so let's start making some money, guys, all right? Next time, I'm out of here. Peace.